Well, welcome to the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm McKenton from the Rink Live, and uh, I'm very happy to be joined by former St. Cloud State forward Mikey Ice. I'm on. Mikey, how you doing? Where are you at here today? Hey, Mick. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm here in Denver, Colorado, back in uh, my hometown, doing some, uh, just kind of enjoying summer and uh, getting ready for the season. It's it's coming up quick, but it's been a long summer, so I'm ready to get back after it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what, what's your uh, your status now? Have you got another year? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Have you got another year on your contract? Your deal last summer. Okay, so. and so you're 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 with the Winnipeg Jets organization. You spent the majority of last season in in Manitoba in the AHL, and uh, uh, you know, just looking at uh, you know, statistically speaking, anyway, it, it looked like your best season as, as a pro. Uh, well, just describe, I guess, Mikey, uh, how you felt like. Uh, the season went last season and, and maybe where you got to where, where you progressed a little bit as a player. Yeah. So that was year four of my pro hockey career. And um, I kind of approach every year the same way where I want to um, at some point in the season, be playing the best hockey I've ever, I've ever played. So it's, that means, that means elevating my game every year it starts in the off season, but obviously it takes, you know, a little bit of time to get into it and, and start feeling it. And as long as I keep uh, progressing every season, like I feel like I have, um, then things are going to keep, uh, you know, going well for me. And I think that last season was, you know, I obviously got my first taste in the NHL and that was um, kind of just proves that I've, what I've been doing has been working and um, it was definitely a good motivation for the summer, this summer as well. Well, let's go back to, you know, let's go to back to that, that moment. Uh, so you're, you're, you're playing with the, with the moose. Uh, how, how'd you kind of find out about it? Uh, you know, where, where, where was uh, your, your first NHL game at? Yeah, it was, I, I got to spend some time up in the NHL quite a bit this year, uh, traveling with the team and kind of experiencing what it's like to be an NHL player. And uh, it was so enjoyable. It was an amazing experience, but it got to the point where I was ready to, uh, I was like, okay, like I'm ready to play, like put me in. Like, uh, and so finally, you know, being home in Winnipeg, I was down with the moose at the time. I've been kind of up and down, hadn't got a chance to, into playing a game yet. And uh, got a call late at night that uh, I was going to be playing uh, the next day in Montreal. So I packed up my stuff and the next morning, um, I met the Jets in Montreal and played my first game at the Bell Center, which was just a crazy experience and more enjoyable than I even could have imagined. I mean, I just had so much fun is the way I put it. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, you, wh- how did you find out, you know, did you get a phone call then? Uh, you know, what was your reaction, I guess, when you, when you hear that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm trying to imagine what that moment is like for, for a player. Well, it's, it's pretty amazing feeling um you know it was my fourth year so it was kind of a finally feeling yeah um but uh you know i kind of kept it pretty low-key between me and my family and um just wanted to go out there and uh focus on the game and i think i I did a good job at being uh, at uh staying focused and going into the game like any other hockey game trying to play my best hockey i could help the team win and at, at the same time enjoying enjoying it and uh really just having the time of my life out there playing in front of uh, um, the Montreal fans. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I think I saw on social media, you, that you, they gave you the rookie lap and everything else. Uh, you know, is that, <laughs> I, I would imagine that, you know, in a moment like that, it's just like, Holy smokes, everybody's watching me. I better, better not trip over my own feet here. Yeah. You definitely see some, uh, some funny stuff happen um, in those first solo laps. It's something you, crosses your mind before before the game you know it's you know it's coming uh I think that my my first lap went uh pretty well Ryan Paling was on the other side of the ice warming up and uh so it's good to see him but uh yeah I don't think I would have done anything differently maybe slowed down a bit I was going pretty fast on those first three laps I had to myself what uh, yeah what, what was it like you know see, seeing Ryan on uh, on the other side uh I would imagine that too uh, it had to be a little bit of a surreal feeling here's a guy obviously you were a teammate with at St. Cloud State yeah it was cool to play my first game against a former teammate and one of my one of my you know lifelong friends as well uh just to see him you know if he can do it I feel like I can do it but uh it's I'm just so proud of him to see what he's doing there and uh, next year in Pittsburgh the way that you know, he's kind of uh, been up and down and then finally been able to kind of start to establish himself a bit this year. And uh, so I'm all the best to him. 
Yeah. How, how do you feel like uh, you were talking about, you know, making steps, uh, you know, every year and, and feeling like, uh, you know, that, that that's one of your, your goals every year is to, to make steps. You know, when you think back to when you left St. Cloud State versus now, what what are some areas where you feel like, you know, you've made some big steps or, or big, I don't know if changes is, is the right term, or, but just maybe your progression, I guess, as a player. Yeah. Um, well, I think that first summer after I uh, had signed um, pro and got a taste in the AHL at the end of my junior year uh, after a season ended um, was kind of the first summer I really took uh, off ice training seriously and you know really just I was in Minnesota by myself living on my own and um, worked out on my own with a uh, with one of LA's trainers and had a skating coach and a shooting coach and I really did it all that summer and I really pushed myself and um, learned what hard work was in the off season. Uh, and, you know, I've kind of taken everything I've learned every summer with me where to this point in my career, um, I kind of have a blueprint of how I want my summer to go, when I want to start skating, uh, what I want to work on, how I want to uh, attack it, and just kind of have a system in, in place for everything I want to do in the summer, and take care of it. I think um, sometimes less is more. I've learned pushing, you can push a little too hard in the summer, but, you know, during the season is a little different. It's, it's, it's a grind. It's long. And uh, so finding ways to just enjoy it, just like like the same way I did college hockey mm -hmm. um, is important, too, because, you know, when you're having fun with your team, best friends at St. Cloud State, it's, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday come around and you're on the road or you're at home and you're just going out there having the time of your life playing with your friends. It's important to remember that when you're playing professional hockey and getting paid to do it at such a serious level with such, uh, you know, a big uh, gap between you and the NHL still. So. Uh, I think that the games where I'm having fun and stuff like that's really when I can feel that progression kind of take place where I'm, you know, kind of learning more about how to, how how I need to act and be as a person to to play at my best. When you're when you're up with the the Jets versus you know, when when you're playing with the Moose, I mean, is is there much difference? I guess in in terms of you know the you know, just the, the play out, out on the ice or are, are there, is it more kind of subtle differences, I guess, between the AHL and the NHL? Um, most of it's pretty subtle, but then there's definitely a, you know, a big gap between, you know, some of the skill, some of the guys that are super skilled and, and insanely fast in the NHL. AHL, you know, you get that because everyone's working so hard and has the same goals in mind. But, uh, you know, when I, when I, when I played in my preseason games, I feel like I've progressed and been, you know, playing a lot better as a, as I've aged a bit into professional hockey. And then in that uh, NHL game I had, I felt like I belong there and, uh, you know, it's going to take, you know, some time to adapt, but you have to do it quick and um, just figure out as you go. Yeah. You know, you know, one of, one of the numbers as, as I was looking at uh, some of your stats from this past season, uh, the penalty minutes, you know, are, are, are you, is, are you adding some physicality to your game? Uh, you know, a little bit more physicality, uh, you know, is that something I guess you're aware of or. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm definitely aware of it. And uh, I think it was a kind of a big, uh, it was a big change going from coach Motsko to uh, coach Mike Stuthers in, in uh, Ontario. My first, it was within my first two years in Ontario. He expects a lot out of you. Um, and, you know, he doesn't try to change the player you are, but you definitely need to add uh, more more grit and physicality. And at the end of the day, it was playing in the Pacific Division in the AHL, which I'm not sure if you're familiar. It's just a much different level of physicality and toughness and uh, even skill and stuff than other divisions in the AHL. So going from the Pacific Division for, for three years to uh, – a little bit less of a division, I'd say, as far as physicality, grit, determination, skill, speed was uh, kind of nice to go to Manitoba and play against those against those teams. You know, the players don't like playing against players like that. And I think that uh, Pacific Division players kind of have a little bit of an edge. And I think that a lot of guys that played in the Pacific Division could attest to that. So, yeah, definitely going to rack up a few more penalty minutes, but uh at the end of the day, I think that um, there's a lot of change that need to be made in the league and um, just the, rep, the officiating and stuff in the AHL. It's, uh, it's sometimes uh, questionable and something that I don't know. <laughs> you just, just got to play through it, right? That's right. <laughs> with the you, you know with, with looking ahead to the you know to the to the coming season, uh, you know, do they give you kind of an indication of, of, of kind of where 
where they see you right now in, in the organization or, you know, what's kind of your, your, your feeling, uh, you know, if you, you feel like you got a better shot, I guess, to it's sticking up with, with the jets here right out of camp than maybe last year. Or... Yeah, that's, that's the goal. I think that, uh, you know, there it's, I kind of just, I've been in this position. This will be my fifth training camp uh, that I've been a part of. And so I just want to go and, you know, just try to show that I'm a, you know, everything I, the type of person I am off the ice and, and then on the ice. And I think that there's a, there's a place for me there. And um, I'm really excited for it. Let, let, let's go back to, uh, you know, you know, growing up, uh, you know, because uh, you grew up in Colorado, obviously, and uh, you know, our perception of, of youth hockey here in Minnesota is, is much different than what you grew up in, you know, out, out in Colorado, just describe a, a little bit of, of uh you know when you got started uh and and how you got in, into the game because you know not everybody in Colorado obviously is is into hockey how did, how did you get involved in it well i you know i don't come from a hockey family but i i was born in 96 the avs won uh the avs moved here in 96 and they won the cup in 96 i picked up hockey after that they soon won again in 01 and hockey kind of boomed since then, you know, nothing like Minnesota or, you know, the Midwest and like North Dakota and or out East, but uh, it's definitely grown a ton since I've been born. So um, that hockey has been a big part of my life uh, in my friend's life. It's kind of all I know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I picked up roller hockey early on with my dad in the, in the parking lots around here and uh, was on a roller hockey team till I was six and joined an ice hockey team and kind of never looked back after that. Uh, you know, did you like, uh, you know, being on the ice right away or was that a, a tough transition for you off, off the, off the rollers or. I never struggled with the transition, um, too much. I think if anything, it helped me the more, you know, it's, it's a lot more puck possession, stick handling and roller hockey. I think that the guys I grew up playing, uh, roller hockey with Troy, Troy Terry, Brandon Carlo, they've, they've, you know, transitioned just fine into the <laughs> NHL now. Uh, so I think if anything, it helped. Um, but well, yeah, once I got on ice hockey and joined the ice hockey team, I realized early on that this was this was way more serious and this was going to be way more of a um, thing I could go with for the rest of my life and uh, something I could dream about watching it. Um, but I, I played roller hockey till I was about 13 and that's a summer. It's a summer thing. So you can kind of do both until ice hockey gets a little too serious when it starts to turn like it's year round. So. How, how, how long have you known Troy Terry then? I've known Troy and Carlos since I was about, since I started roller. So like, or maybe around like when I was like six or seven, we were on a team together. A um, few other guys too, but uh, yeah, that was, that's really how I got into hockey. Is, does it seem a little, you know, does it seem, you know, weird way, you know, you think back to knowing those guys at, at the, that age and now you see them, you know, play you, all you guys playing pro hockey now. I mean, is that, uh, you know, is, is that, how cool is that, I guess, for you? It's, it's cool to see that like, everyone knows guys that they played with as kids that, you know, made it maybe one or two guys. I have, you know, a lot of friends that have made it and, uh, but yeah, you know, I still, you know, we still play together in summer hockey and it's fun to watch, uh, you know, Troy and Brandon out there and uh, in summer hockey, cause summer hockey is a little bit more uh, closer to what roller hockey was like. You're just kind of out there stick handling and dangling. Um, not too worried about offsides, but uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it's it's uh, it kind of brings you back a bit. What what age did you start uh, travel hockey then? Uh, when when did that start for you? Oh, I, I started. I think I made. Uh, I think my first. I traveled for the first time when I was a mites, but I guess I played. I played squirt A. Um, you know, I I started when I was like seven or eight. Okay, so yeah. so how far how far would you guys travel even at that age then? You know, just to get some games in. Yeah, we, we travel quite a bit. Uh, more, we, we, we travel way more than, you know, my Minnesota friends ever had to. Um, <laughs> as kids, we would, we would be, once it got really serious, we were traveling around the country nine or 10 times a year missing school. And, um, you know, we're just kids from all over the state as opposed to just your high school. So we, we had, you know, two or three teams here we could play and then we'd have to go to Texas or Arizona or you know, we even went to Boston quite a bit, out east, and Canada. We were all over. How how good were the teams that you were on? So we had some good teams. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like I, I can't name everyone on them, but like our, if you look at my U16 hockey teams, it's pretty impressive. Some of the guys we had in 
uh, we would get upset at regionals every year. So, uh, but we had some, we had some like pretty stacked rosters, I'd say. Let's see if I can find the, the, the roster here from, from a 16 U team that you're on. Okay. So yeah, it was you Frederick Olofsson, Troy yeah. Terry, Brandon Carlo. Uh, let's see. I'll just go on the names here. Uh, Zach, Zach Goberus, uh, Brendan Smith, Nathan Cole, uh, David Moore, uh, Marabella. Dylan Gambrell is on that team as well. Yep. Yep. Dylan Gambrell. There you go. Uh, yeah, holy smokes! Yeah, that's quite a, quite a team. You're, you're going yeah. through Austin Shaw and and Cole Morris. So, yeah, I mean, there's there was a lot of talent on that team, huh? Definitely, yeah. And uh, Freddie Freddie Lawson played. We played against him at UNO. He just signed a a deal with the Dallas Stars after playing a couple of years in Sweden. So that was that was cool to see a guy go to Europe and play really well and then make it back to uh, you know his old dream that he had. So I'm excited to see him play. I'm, I, with, with those teams and uh, would your parents go with you on, on those road trips or is it just kind of the team or how, how did those go like when you're playing yeah usually teams? when we're really young uh a one like a mom or dad goes with the player and uh you have a hotel and then as we got older you know once we're like 14 15 16 you kind of just go you go meet the team at the airport and you kind of travel around in your in your khakis and your polo and just kind of pretend to be an adult for a weekend or so <laughs> when when did the college people start talking with you mikey i mean when, when did that really start out i think uh like it was such a stacked team some get some kids started committing around 14 mm -hmm. i kind of started when i was like late 14 early 15 age and uh it was kind of a pretty pretty quick process for me i had been um offered a few schools and then i ended up in uh brainerd we had a tournament there and uh, St. Cloud had offered me, so I wanted to see the school. And my mom and dad drove up one night. They came on the trip, and they drove up with me one night to St. Cloud to meet Motsko. And they were doing the construction on her, the Herb Brooks and to see how excited Motsko was showing me everything that they're doing. And then the campus and stuff like that. And, um, but I never did, like, the official visit that a lot of guys do mm -hmm. where they get to go and um, hang out with the team and watch a couple games. What, so it was kind of enough for me to just to see that. Yeah. What well, what impressed you so much that that you know you decided okay this is the spot for me then? Well, it just seemed um, I had the luxury of being able to choose a school, and I figured um, I'd go to where I was most wanted, where I could most hope hopefully progress my career. And uh, the way Motsko spoke about spoke to me. Um, you know, offering for me to go in as a true freshman, even though I declined and um, we kind of mutually declined and decided I'd stay a year in juniors. Um, it just kind of made it me feel uh, pretty like secure there and that I would have a chance to uh, be a real player there and, um, you know, try to win a Hobie Baker and, and, a, and a national championship and all the things that you want to do while you're at college. Um, and, you know, ended up being the best decision I've, I've ever made. And also, uh, you know, I learned a lot from, you know, how I approach making that choice uh, with other things in life as well. So were, were Denver and CC, you know, involved, uh, you know, or did they take a look at you? Were, were you interested in either one of them at that time? Or were you trying to get away from home a little bit? Both were involved and both were uh, options, but I decided, uh, you know, after DU had offered a couple other teammates and CC had offered one other teammate, um, I felt a little bit just uh, not slighted, but just uh, like I said, I wanted to go to where I was most wanted and mm -hmm. um, that was St. Cloud. So, uh, you know, it was nice to get away from home. I think it's a good thing to do in your college years, mm -hmm. uh, living pretty far. Plus, you know, you have some teammates as well that are in the same boat as you, mm -hmm. like Robbie and Patrick, um, who don't live near home. So uh, that was good too. Of course, you know, after I committed, there was some part of me that was like, wow, I'm really going to miss home is this the right decision? But uh, it only, I think it only took a uh, welcome weekend for me to say, okay, I'm in the right place. <laughs> You're talking about Robbie Jackson and Patrick Newell are both, uh, are both from California and, and were your teammates uh, here as well. Uh, you know, so you, uh, you know, you, you get to say, let's say you play here for, for three seasons uh, and three very successful seasons for, for, for you. Uh, when, when you think back to your, your career, Mikey, what, what are things that are some of the first things I guess come to your mind uh, about playing at St. Cloud State? 
Well, of course, the off ice, um, that group of friends I made, like, it's just like, I think about it all the time still. And I still have the group chat with our class. And, um, you know, we've, we're always trying to meet up. It's been hard the past two summers with uh, COVID, but uh, we've made it work once and it's been great. So just, you know, living the dorm life, you know, your first apartment, um, where you have to grocery shop and even, even the school part aspect, you know, you don't, you don't think you're going to miss it in the moment, but, uh, there's definitely some teachers you miss and, you know, your advisor and, um, some classes that were really interesting. And, um, that, that part's like, that's why I just preach college hockey to younger guys so much is that, that side of things, but also obviously on the ice, you know, freshman year, I always remember struggling that first, that first half of freshman year and, um, kind of, you know, getting my bearings and after winter break, being able to kind of take off and never look back. So, I mean, I could, just, I mean, I could look back on almost any game that we played. If you show me the box score, I could kind of tell you exactly what happened. It's just every game is so memorable. <laughs> no, that's uh, your, your freshman year, you, you ended up, uh, well, well, they moved you around. I'm, this is my memory. Anyway, they, they moved you around a little bit in, in the lineup, trying to find right line combinations and stuff. And then eventually uh, you end up with 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 Cali Kosala and, and Patrick Russell on the same line. Am I wrong? No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when when the three of you guys got together, I mean, did did it just you know feel like you know was there a comfort level there right away? Because it sure looked. That's my memory of it. Is is that there was just something there when when you guys got together? Yeah, we had uh, after Christmas break, we had some exhibition games. Um, I think two against Arizona, who was, you know, about to become D1 and then one against the U.S. program. So Motsko was able to kind of work with some. I think some of the seniors took some night, a couple of those nights off. And um, I was put on a line with Kosala and, and Russell and I scored two goals and an assist in one of those exhibition games. And um, I was able to kind of stick with that line for the rest of the season. And a lot more power play time and that I just attest so much of that to to coach Motsko giving me that opportunity I just you know I appreciate it so much I don't I don't know how much I everything in my career I kind of worked for and that was something I was kind of just given uh because he believed in me and um you know I'll never forget that because that that kind of you know definitely changed my career and trajectory of, of that season and the rest of my college hockey career so uh the, that second half of the season was just uh absolutely insanely fun and I was so focused on hockey and um, my grades weren't bad either. So. <laughs> and all three of you guys are still playing college or also playing uh professional hockey. Uh, we think of, uh, you know, both those guys. So let's talk about Cali for, for a minute. You know, what, what are things that, you know, have stuck in your mind about, you know, just being on a line with them and him as a player? I think he was always, he was the guy that I, would always attest all of my accomplishments I had in college hockey too, because of how, how, how well he communicated with me. Mm -hmm. um, he was so serious about hockey and his body and training um, that I was able to take some of that from him. And although I didn't take it as seriously as him back then, I do now. And, um, but just the way he approached hockey and, you know, helped me out on the ice, off the ice, talk to me, talk me through it. That's something I like to do with my teammates, whether they're helping me or I'm helping them. Um, we were always on the same page and, uh, you know, I just, his, just his skating was remarkable. His passing, his stick handling. I mean, I, I he might have been the most skilled college hockey player I'd have, I've ever seen just as far from a purely sk skill standpoint. And Patrick Russell's kind of a much different player than that, but uh, he was just kind of a great ad to have on that line. Like he, he could play up and down the lineup, but he's going to score goals no matter who he's playing with. So the, the one thing that I always, that always sticks in my mind about Patrick Russell is I, I've, I don't think I ever saw the guy lose a board battle. <laughs> Honest to goodness. It seemed yeah. like he would go on the boards with somebody and the puck was going to one of you guys. Yeah, he's, I mean, he was insanely a strong guy. He just had that build where it was just kind of like unfair. He could use one arm and block you or the other arm. And um, he was also just had a great vision. And uh, when you have, when you put that together with a little bit of chemistry with me and Kale, uh, not that he needed us. He was so, such a force out there, but uh, we definitely helped try to help him as much as we could. Uh, that fr your freshman year, you end up being the, the MVP of the frozen face off. When you think back to the, your experience, you know, playing in the frozen face off, what are, are there a few things, I guess, that, that immediately kind of come to mind when you think of that, that uh, particular tournament or. 
Well, yeah, when I think of winning MVP at the Frozen Faceoff, I, I, I also think of winning MVP at the North Star Cup like a month or month and a half before that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, I mean, just like the confidence I had that year built. And um, I mean, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty crazy uh, feeling with the, how, how hard the NCHC Cup is to win. Mm-hmm. Um, some people say it's harder to win than a national championship. I don't know the logic behind that, but people say that. And <laughs> I think it's... Uh, I don't know. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I still remember every goal I scored there and how it happened. So. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, and the, you know, you end up spending, uh, you know, three seasons, uh, you, you were talking about, uh, you know, the, the class uh, that you came in with talk, talk about, uh, you know, who are all in your recruiting class uh, that, that, that your freshman season. Yeah. We had Clark, Clark Custer, John Lazat. Still, you know, he just got his first NHL game as well this year. Uh, Jimmy Schultz, Will Borgen, both uh, guys that have quite a bit of NHL experience, especially uh, especially Will. Um, Jacob Benson, one of my best friends for life, will be in my wedding. Um, Robbie Jackson, Patrick Newell, just kind of the definition of two guys. Like if you play hockey and you go to a school out of, out of your state, you just inherit your friends. And that's who we got. And it was just like we're still so close. And um yeah so that's our class david zevnik as well came in later in the year so that that's a heck of a talented group though i mean when you think yeah. back to it i mean and look at it i mean <laughs> that's a pretty good group of guys. yeah yeah we were well we knew it at the time too when we were at the summer skates we were like no one was talking about it as much but we were by the end of the year like one of the top freshman class and we had a pretty big impact on that team who was kind of a top like older heavy team like you know, most of our top players were, were seniors or, or juniors. So um, having that freshman class coming in on the, on the caboose was like probably a huge boost. And Moscow is probably pretty pumped up about it too, getting inheriting some more uh, really good players for the long run. The, 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 that next season, uh, you know, you, you guys actually didn't, make, you know, some obviously some guys graduated, some guys left, you know, you guys finished below 500, didn't, you know, you had a really good series, a, a two game series up, at, up at North Dakota. It didn't come out your way. Uh, but, uh, the, then the following season, you guys end up winning, uh, the, the, the conference championship. Uh, it, 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 I, when I'm thinking back to that, I, I'm just thinking, I, I thought you guys were going to be better, but I didn't imagine that you guys were going to be quite as good as you guys ended up being in it, that last season that you were there. Uh, w- w- was your feeling, I guess, going into it that, the year before had just been a little bit of an aberration or yeah I mean we, the, the year before the sophomore year it didn't feel as bad as it looked because some of those games were so close and we weren't we were always in the hunt and in that top spot to like you know pushing for a spot we were never out of it we never had a weekend where we're like wow like we're you know we we always had confidence in our, in our team and um so yeah the junior like just be, having another year of experience and having such a big fr- class where it's okay it's eight of us and now we're upperclassmen um we're definitely going to be competing for the top spot in the conference and and maybe in the in college hockey and, um yeah college teams get on runs and we just kind of ran that year so uh yeah it was a disappointing end to it all but uh obviously me and will borgen leaving um didn't matter that much because they had a pretty good year the year after as well and the year after that and then even this past year so it's it's uh, it's kind of part of the culture there now like it's it seems like just whatever guys sh- whatever guys are there it's kind of next man up you know you, you turn to an upperclassman it's, it's on you now and the guys always kind of run with it and I still see it now with the younger guys that are there I guess they're becoming older guys that call it in college and they're you know they're kind of just big dogs on campus and they're 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 kind of who we were then. So it's kind of cool. It's just part of the culture now, I guess. How, how, how tough a decision was, was it to, to turn pro? Because obviously the, the, the Kings had drafted you, uh, you, know, the, you know, typically, you know, they, they have your, your rights through, you know, the right before your senior year of, of college. Uh, was, was it a really tough choice for you or did you feel like you were ready? You know, when we think back to your decision to, uh, to turn pro, what, what, what comes to mind there? I think uh, just because there was a push to sign after um, sophomore year that once junior year came and I had a good year, um, I was kind of 
it was kind of always the plan and it's not something I've ever looked back on and wondered what if about um I think I was ready I think LA was ready for me um it's it's you know I don't think it would have been the wrong decision to stay but uh looking back on where I was my my first year pro the time to where I am now it's the the strides I've made are pretty incredible and I kind of attest that to uh turning pro early and getting that one more year of experience under my belt and um, just another year of playing some better hockey at the pro level kind of helped me as, you know, as long as you keep your head in it. What, what was the toughest part of the transition going from, from college to, to pro hockey for you? I think the speed of the game, the AHL is super fast. It's lots of hitting. They finish checks. There's, there's fighting again, there's big scrums and it kind of feels like a bit of a whirlwind at first. I think, um, definitely those first three games I played, but, uh, yeah, I think just like anything, as long as you can adapt, um, you're going to be, I think the best players are the players that can adapt the best. So, I, When Garrett Raboyne, uh, Garrett Raboyne was an assistant coach uh, when you were at St. Cloud State, uh, now he's uh, going to be a head coach at, at Augustana in, in, in Sioux Falls, where you, you played some hockey, uh, obviously won a Clark Cup there uh, in, in the USHL. Uh, when you think about uh, Garrett as a coach, uh, any of that surprise you that that, that he's uh, going to be a head coach now? Or I think he's, yeah, I mean, he, him and Motsko were super close. I think uh, um, he wasn't a guy that had to be groomed into a head coach. He always had it in him. Like he was, he was pretty sure he was captain for two years while he was at St. Cloud, if not maybe three even. And uh, he just kind of has that uh, um, that leadership quality about him that, you know, he's going to be able to uh, lead a big group of guys. And um, so I'm super happy for him. Um, I never worked with him too closely at all, just being a, being a forward. He was always close with the D-man and a couple other guys, but uh, I always had Monsko, so. <laughs> right, Bob loved the forwards, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Being a former forward, that that's not entirely surprising. But uh, <laughs> Mikey, uh, congratulations on on making your NHL debut and and continuing to progress here. And we wish you all the best here as you're getting ready for for training camp. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, really fun catching up with Mikey Isamont. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in here to the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast and Mick Hatton from the Rink Live. Please check out all of our great content here on the website.